Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Views and News, and I'm Faisal Rahman live uh, from our Islamabad studios. Today, we'll be talking about the uh, 48th session of OIC that is being held in Islamabad on the 22nd and 23rd of March 2022. Now, as we all know, there are 57 states, and then there are observer states like China also. The Chinese foreign minister has already arrived in Pakistan. The rest of these uh, guests will be coming in tonight as well as uh, early tomorrow. And the mood is going to start uh, uh, in the morning. And as we all know, it's a two-day uh, session that is very important. Most of the important areas that would be a part of this discussion, number one, Islamophobia. As we all know that the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, has raised this issue on all the top forums, whether you talk about United Nations or otherwise. And this year also, we'll be talking about that. Kashmir issue, again, another very important uh, problem for the Muslim Ummah. And uh, though there are countries that support uh, the Kashmiri people, so we have not only invited uh, the representative of the Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir, who are uh, very much pro-Kashmir, in fact. And uh, they'll be arriving. Other than that, uh, as we all know, that Pakistan has always been a fortress of Islam and uh, again I think it's a great honor for Pakistan to host this moot and uh, talk about the issues that are related to the Muslim Ummah. So a uh, Palestinian issue would also be a part of it and when we talk about uh, in fact the, the importance of OIC a lot of people believe that OIC uh, member states they have not done much. But if you look at it uh, from 1989 to 1995, even during the Bosnian issue, when the Muslims were slaughtered and they were killed in that part of the world, the OIC played a very important role. And again, as far as Kashmir is concerned, they have always raised their uh, voice in the favor of the Kashmiri people. You also talk about the challenges which are being faced by the Muslim Ummah the way the Americans in particular, they have targeted the Muslim countries and the sanctions that have been imposed on, on countries like Iran or Libya for that matter, and even on Pakistan uh, in uh, certain times. So that is also something very important. And when you talk about the number of Muslims, it is 1.9 billion people. So you are talking about a huge, uh, a little less than 40% of the total global population. So perhaps that is also very important. And look at the size of the area where the Muslims live. You start off from the Moroccan side, all the way, if you go towards the east, uh, almost uh, till the extreme eastern part, a little close to East Timor in uh, Indonesia, you will find Muslims. Though they are also scattered in Europe, as well as the United States of America, in Africa also. But just imagine the total area where the Muslims live. So obviously, they have their genuine concerns. They have some legitimate uh, issues that should be discussed. Uh, but uh, again, uh, we'll be talking about the importance of this OIC uh, moot, this uh, particular conference. We'll also be talking about in our today's program uh, regarding the issues that will be discussed, the highlights, and eventually what would be the theme. We'll be talking about that. So we'll be also uh, be talking to uh, Asim Iftikhar Saab, who's the spokesperson of Foreign uh, Office, and we'll also be talking to Dr. Talat Shabir Saab, he's the director of CPSC, ISSI, and also the Lieutenant General Retired Olam Mustafa Saab, who's a senior analyst as well. Right now, we have with us uh, Dr. Talat Shabir Saab, and let's uh, see what he has to uh, say about the OIC moot that is being held in Islamabad. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Saab. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Dr. Saab, for your time. Now, since we are talking about the very important mood that is being held tomorrow and the day after tomorrow on 23rd as well, uh, almost uh, most of the member states, uh, they have sent their representatives. The Chinese uh, foreign minister has also arrived. And there is a long list of the countries uh, whose uh, foreign ministers will be arriving in Pakistan. Most of them have they've arrived and few will be coming in uh, tonight as well as tomorrow early morning. So. Talking about the major issues that are supposed to be talked about, one is Kashmir. So, support for Kashmir. Let's start off from there, sir. Dr. Uh, thank you very much, Faisal. You invited me over. Uh, I would just like to mention that uh, the mood, the time of mood is very crucial. It's very important time uh, that there's a, a kind of transition taking place uh, globally, and there are very important events happening in the region. 
uh, in the region. Uh, specifically, when we talk of this mood, it will discuss Afghanistan issue. And of course, uh, it is time when Russia has also uh, invaded uh, Ukraine. And, you know, that has also created a kind of global stir. Um, but when uh, when we even talk of uh, OIC, uh, we, we understand that uh, organization of 57 countries um, who have come come uh, together in 1969 in basically in response to occupation of Aqsa, Al-Aqsa Mosque. And then onward, this organization has actu actually uh, grown. And of course, you are right that uh, it has not been able to resolve all the problems that Muslim world faced, but at least it is, there's a forum that you can discuss uh, your issues. Now, uh, when we talk specifically, we talk of uh, uh, Kashmir dispute. Um, in the past, there were there were many Muslim states who, who were very forthcoming uh, on Kashmir issue, but I think the response, uh, overall response of the uh, Muslim uh, was not all that all that very strong. That could all uh, that could in fact uh, uh, create kind of uh, uh, a situation where India is forced to uh, go go for some kind of resolution. Now, uh, when we talk of OIC, we we understand that it's not um, you know it's not an organization like UN or it's not like it's not organization like EU. Uh, in in countries have individual interest. They, in fact, uh, uh, they are watching the developments and they definitely take care of their own individual interests when they look at issues uh, facing the Muslim Ummah. So, uh, but this is, a, this is an important time and uh, I think uh, globally also the uh, Modi regime has, in fact, inflicted a lot of uh, atrocities uh, on Kashmiris and this is a time that world public opinion is also you know, contributed a bit in trying to uh, raise this issue globally. So this is a this is a time that uh, I think OIC countries, member countries, can be uh, convinced and persuaded to talk something about Kashmir. And this is the time that the these countries can, in fact, uh, persuade India also because many of them have very close relationship with India. In fact, that is what. We in Pakistan also, uh, you know, look with uh, suspicion or not suspicion, maybe, but you know, with concern that uh, uh, when you say Umma, uh, I think we we sh we have expectation from each other. So I think this is a very important time uh, that uh, OIC should talk about Palestinian Muslims. <clears throat> uh, OIC should talk about Kashmiris clearly, and they should try to uh, devise or formulate some kind of formula whereby. There's a real, genuine pressure can be can <clears throat> can be put on India to come for the resolution of this issue. Uh, we expect a lot from this conference, and uh, it's very you know, proud moment for Pakistan also that Pakistan is hosting this uh, this very important conference. And we are also we also uh, host a Chinese foreign minister, which is very important development. Uh, you can say because China is now a stakeholder in the region. And China has, uh, you know, stakes in regional peace and development. So it's very important for us to have Chinese best uh, Chinese uh, foreign minister also uh, joining this uh, OIC uh, conference. And we expect there will be, you know, there will be some some kind of development with regards to Kashmir issue. Now another very important factor that is about the concept of Islamophobia. Prime Minister Imran Khan has always criticised the West. Uh, regarding certain issues where they should have intervened and things would have been a lot better uh, for the Muslim world. But so talking about this issue, I think he's the only Muslim leader who has raised this concern and it has been <coughs> accepted and it has been hailed also. I was listening to a couple of uh, uh, leaders uh, from South uh, Africa also, Muslim uh, Imam, and he was really appreciating the efforts of the Prime Minister. You talk about United Nations. Prime Minister, when he talks about Kashmir or other issues, I think one of the most important factor which was raised then and has become something very important and now we observe a certain date in March um, uh, as, as Islamophobia Day. Now, Islamophobia, because that is something which we all need to concentrate on and we should try to make sure that the true picture of this peaceful religion that is called Islam should be seen by the Western world in its true spirit. 
because IS, IS or Daesh or Boko Haram or any extremist organization is not the representation of our religion. But unfortunately, that has become. And perhaps that has created the difference between the West and the East. Your take, sir. Yes. Uh, you know, this is very important also. Islamophobia ha is a kind of a global issue at the moment because uh, there's a whole, uh, the West led by America, they are in fact uh, trying to advance this concept of Islamophobia. Islam is some kind of threat to the civilization or threat to the other ideologies. Now, this is also, uh, I think, our exclusive pride, pride that Prime Minister of Pakistan, Mr. Imran Khan, has raised this issue on all the forums that he had opportunity to speak on, particularly in, in the United, United Nations General Assembly when he was speaking. He was making a speech. He categorically said Islamophobia is, is going to be a big, big, big problem for, for the world, world peace. Now, uh, I think... Uh, OIC, and if you you just uh, you know uh, look at last two two or three years um, uh, statements by various leaders from Muslim world, no one has made any statement uh, about Islamophobia that clearly as Prime Minister Imran Khan has made in in the United Nations General Assembly or elsewhere, wherever he has opportunity to speak to the Western audience, he talks of Islamophobia and he talks of Islamophobia. As, as is a portrayed threat by the uh, you know Western scholars, Western media portrays Islam Islam as a threat to their ideology and to the world peace. No, this is something very strange. You know they actually link this with terrorism across the world, and we we understand the terrorists across the world. Uh, we we don't say that they are Muslim Muslim, though they have identity as a Muslim. But you know we uh, condemn. Every Muslim country condemns terrorism uh, in, all, in all its forms. So I think it's it's not fair to uh, refer to Muslims and uh, Islam as a dangerous proposition for the world peace. So I think Prime Minister has uh, been talking about it and we expect that there should be a, a resolution coming on this Islamophobia specifically and a powerful message to the entire world about uh, Islam uh, taken as some kind of threat to international, international peace and Islamophobia, uh, uh, I think should should be uh, should be discussed as a subject, an important uh, agenda in the in the OIC meeting. Now, looks up another important factor, and that is about the situation in Afghanistan. We all know what's going on out there. Though we talk about uh, uh, Ukraine crisis in detail at length. If you switch on the Western uh, media, any television channel, they are giving 24-7 live coverage to this issue. Because white Christian Europeans are getting displaced. But sir, when you talk about Afghanistan, no news about Afghanistan. Though people are practically selling their kidneys to feed their families. This is the situation. In winters, they went through some really harsh times. Pakistan has a stance that we will see what the regional countries and the countries which surround Afghanistan uh, come up with. You know, obviously you need to have a solution because it's a problem regarding the, the Muslims. The point here, sir, which I want you to concentrate and throw light on, is about uh, the current Afghan crisis. Do you think as far as the recognition of the Taliban government is concerned, that could be one of the agendas, sir? discussed in, at length at the uh, YC conference. Uh, Afghanistan is a very important issue, though because of this Russian invasion of Ukraine and uh, uh, the you know, portrayal of, uh, of Ukraine as something, a big issue, uh, has uh, overshadowed Afghanistan issue. But you are right that uh, there are uh, there is a human, hum, humanitarian crisis erupting in Afghanistan and the world is not doing much about it. Um, in the last OIC special meeting of OIC Afghanistan issue, which was focused on uh, Afghanistan issue specifically, there were many pledges made, many promises were made, and I think Muslim world is trying to help uh, Afghanistan. Uh, uh, but with regards to uh, recognition, I think the regional approach, uh, the, the way Pakistan thing looks at uh, the issue, uh, I know China is also part of this uh, OIC meeting, and uh, of course, uh, there has to be a consensus of regional countries to, you know, that was Pakistan, that was what Pakistan's stance was. 
for the last couple of months since uh, August uh, uh, the Taliban's takeover. Afghanistan, recognition of Afghanistan is very, uh, though in, in, um, in a de facto, as de facto countries have recognized Talib, Taliban, but I think it is very important to recognize Taliban officially so that a kind of help or assistance that can be given officially by international um, uh, assist, uh, humanitarian organizations and international institutions that can be coming coming forward for Afghan, Afghan people. Uh, uh, the issue was overshadowed by Ukraine crisis. And uh, of course, uh, this is also, uh, uh, when we look at this issue, it, it uh, you know, looks some kind of biased uh, approach towards uh, human beings. For example, uh, if you talk about uh, atrocities in um, Ukraine, you should also talk of atrocities elsewhere in the world also. If you see children, women are killed, uh, in parts of uh, Ukraine, you know, there are women and children are killed elsewhere in the world also. So I think uh, this is the responsibility of uh, major powers to look at the issue uh, with, with fairness and justice. You know, if you want international peace to prevail, so you'll have to treat all the human beings living on this planet as human beings. It's not that, you know, white human being is more important than uh, maybe uh, any any other human being. So uh, there has to be, in, I'm talking of global response to Afghan crisis and of course UN, Ukraine crisis. Of but course, Afghanistan you, is you, very important. Sir, you issue. raised a very important <laughs> point here, uh, Dr. Talat, because, yeah. you know, whenever we talk about um, the Westerners or the whites, whether in Australia or New Zealand or Europe or United States of America in particular, uh, when a crime is committed by a white against any Muslim, that is considered a hate crime. Hate crime. But yeah. interestingly, if a Muslim does the same, he is considered as a terrorist. Unfortunately, that is the narrative that sells, whether we like it or we don't. When somebody uh, who stabs <laughs> somebody, you know, on, on a personal level, even if that person is a Muslim, he would be rated and regarded as a terrorist. Whereas uh, in Canada, something happened and, you know, I was going through the you know, television channel, you know, hate crime committed by Mr. So-and-so. You know, this has to come to an end. We are all human beings at the end of the day. Any crime is a crime, whether it's committed by a Christian, a Jew or Muslim or Hindu or anyone. So that is perhaps another important uh, factor that will be discussed in the coming days. Your take and then we also have been joined in by Irfan Ghori Saab. And I would like to, in fact, to take his comment on the same point as well. First, you, Dr. Shabir. Yeah, I was just try trying to say, uh, you know, you, you divide uh, opinion on, on world affairs. For example, if uh, Russia invades uh, Ukraine, it's invasion. But if America does the same, exactly. it's kind of liberation. It's not, you know, you have to... Liberation. Uh, have to <laughs> you know, you, you can't say that. You have to be just, you know, uh, you're, you're attacking a country is kind of help to them, uh, helping those uh, uh, country countrymen. And uh, uh, but when Russia does that, you you call it aggression and you call it imagine. I think uh, we need to be very very clear, be very very clear. And I the what we since we are talking in the context of uh, OIC, OIC must press hard that if you want justice in the entire world you have to treat all the human beings equally you have to treat all the people on planet equally and the major powers in the world has a responsibility to international peace it is their responsibility because they have power they have money they have they are economically sound they can you know uh, call the shots so it is their responsibility to bring peace and harmony in the world and I think uh, if if you have to blame somebody for lack of peace in the world, it is I think only major powers because they have their double standards. They have their you know different criteria for one uh, one race or community and different criteria for for the other, and that's that's really unfair. All right, now Irfan Ghori sir, am I audible to you, sir? G Faisal, yes, I can. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much uh, for talking to PTV World. Now, uh, Ghori sir, a very interesting. Uh, debate that was uh, perhaps about this concept of Islamophobia and again uh, as rightly mentioned by our friend uh, Dr. Talat Shabir Saab that uh, uh, hate crime and the difference between that and terrorism 
unfortunately if a muslim does something wrong which we always talk about he would be rated and considered as a terrorist whereas a white man doing even a crime worse than that would be considered in the brackets mm -hmm. of hate crime so these double standards number one and secondly if you look at it look at it fr from a fr from a different perspective that you know let's take the example of middle east for that matter all these organizations which were supported by the west isis boko haram daesh yeah. Yeah. all the fundamentalists i mean yeah. they were shown as the face of islam whereas i won't even consider them muslims because yeah. they kill and they are brutal they have no concepts of what islam is all about capturing lands capturing women and you know what they what they do mm. so i believe that this is something which has been done intentionally and that's how the west has started looking towards the muslims which is absolutely wrong your take yes professor actually you know the, uh, after 911 what we have seen is that uh, the you know muslims being a muslims muslim uh, if you you know uh, the other identity that you had was you know extremist terrorist something like that even if you would be landing at some airport uh, you're going to america or you know uh, to to any other country so this is something that started from there and now it has become uh, in uh, initially it was on media and you know on official level but now what we have seen is that uh, you know the the terrorist the terrorist incidents in in west you know where the muslims mosques uh, the mosques have been attacked the uh, women there those who were wearing any hijab or you know uh, i'm not talking about burqa you know even the hijab so you are just covering so, your head basically yes covering your head that had uh, that has become a crime so this is something so that there, there over would, the years i would say one thing that why not to put the same check on the nuns they also cover their head i was in yes. school i've studied in a missionary school i've always seen all these women covering their head yes that that is what i'm saying that you know even your muslim identity that has become sort of uh, uh, a thing where you know the people would be hating you or at least if not hating you they would be there would be a, some bias that they would be showing so this is uh, unfortunate and i think uh, forums like oic or you know i mean the muslims we have to collectively raise our voices that uh, this is something that is not acceptable like you said that if uh, some uh, you know some christian or some somebody following any other religion if they carry uh, carry out some uh, crime that is you know that's they treated as in a different way than if a muslim has carried out something if it is small it would become you know such a big news all over the world so this is uh, this is where i think it is time that uh, yes the un has now you know passed a resolution we all know but then it comes to the muslims now we have to take a stand that if we would be conceding the way you have, you would have seen you know what had happened in india you know where the girls who were going to schools and colleges uh they were being forced to you know not to wear their dupatta or whatever you know the hijab so this should be a choice of your personal choice if somebody wants to wear it or not that is their personal choice you cannot force them if you say that it is uh, you know a, a, a person's right it it, be, it it is as as a fund fundamental right of a person of you know whatever you want to wear if, you know if it's take the example of six would you be forcing them to uh, take off their turban they won't do it it is uh, the same should be with the muslims that if should be uh, if it comes to your i mean uh, whatever you wear are you you know this is your personal choice and the other thing is that uh, uh, we should be treated equally you know absolutely i mean look at the dressing of a rabi i mean from the jews i mean has he ever been told to take off his cap or or trim the beard or something of that beard, sort beard yeah their their beards would be much bigger than you know the people uh, keeping beards here yeah and i now now we uh, gari sahab we have also been joined in by lieutenant general retired uh, uh, gulam mustafa sahab who is a senior analyst general sahab assalam alaikum
السلام علیکم جان صاحب سر گڈ ٹو ہیو یو ان دا شو سر تھینک یو ویری مچ فار ٹیکنگ آؤٹ یور ٹائم ان ٹاکنگ ٹو اس سر فرسٹ آف آل لیٹس ٹاک اباؤٹ دی او آئی سی سمٹ دیٹ از بینگ ہیلڈ ان اسلام آباد آن دی ٹوینٹی سیکنڈ اینڈ ٹوینٹی تھرڈ آف مارچ دس ایئر فورٹی ایٹ سیشن کپل آف ویری امپارٹنٹ ایریاز ریگارڈنگ افغانستان اسلام فوبیا کشمیر فلسطین اکنامک ڈیولپمنٹ سو اینڈ سو فور آئی وانٹ یو ٹو تھرو لائٹ آن دس ویری امپارٹنٹ موٹ اینڈ Uh, the timing of the mood, sir, and uh, the importance of Pakistan, because I think Imran Khan uh, has become a global Muslim leader now, sir. That's how he has been looked upon. Your take. Sir, uh, first thing that you must understand that uh, coming at this point in time, when you have Pakistan in such a terrible situation, because those who are devastated for about 20 years, They are trying to back out of it. They are the ones who should have been building it, but now the Afghans have been left to their own and they have suffered a lot in the last winters and they continue to suffer right now. And uh, Muslims coming together, hopefully they should uh, say something very positive and cuff out a few uh, bucks also and help out the Afghan brothers because they are the ones who need this. More importantly, it is now time to save Afghanistan and save the Afghans and give them what is their right. let them decide how they want to live their life rather than forcing them to do one thing or the other against their uh, wishes against the way that society uh, wants to live how can i mean the americans or anybody else can go and tell them that you do one thing or uh, uh, do this and do that i mean can the americans uh, listen to us when they tell them okay you're not going to take off your clothes when you go to the beaches why So number one, that is the critical thing. Second, Pakistan has been raising a lot of uh, human cry about Kashmir. It doesn't caught on the way it should have. And this is the time when, uh, like the Prime Minister said, that we have to and we must uh, ensure that the Muslim countries uh, who can play a very vital role in forcing India to back off from the atrocities that are being committed on our Kashmiri brethren, Uh, number one to start with number two to give them what is their right again if india thinks that that it has its rights to do whatever that they want to do the indians want to do that the kashmiris have the right too and the world is uh, oblivious to what is happening to the kashmiris and world is also not ready to listen to kashmiris and what is happening to them and listen to what pakistan is telling them all the time There is a situation likely to ex- escalate, and we almost had this a uh, few uh, weeks back when a missile so-called uh, landed uh, by mistake in Pakistan. So Pakistan had reacted the way Pakistan was, I mean, wise to and would have. We would have been uh, up in flames. The whole world would have been up in flames. That is something that the world must rise, you know, wake up to. Obviously, Palestine is as burning an issue for uh, the Muslims, like a dagger in the heart of Muslim lands. So these are three very important issues that Pakistan is going to touch, and we have the right man to talk about it because he is the first one went on the podium in no less than the United Nations General Assembly and raised a voice so passionately, so strongly that the other countries also came around, and he is now being recognized as one voice who can raise the concerns of Muslims across the length and breadth of the world, and his voice is being heard. He is being recognized as such. So I think at this point in time, when Imran Khan is heading Pakistan, and this uh, boot happening in Pakistan, uh, with these issues that we have talked about, I think is the right man, and hopefully, I think something very positive must come out of it, uh, so that the, the underprivileged Muslim people all over the world they should realize that there is somebody who should back them up also. And no, finally, I mean, before I finish my this uh, like document. Right. Muslims must recognize, and uh, here I like to quote uh, editorial of Washington Post, which is, I think 91, and it mentioned very clearly that now that we have defeated and finished communism, who is our next enemy? And it mentioned Islam. Period. Must know that the issue at stake is. Not Pakistan or Afghanistan or uh, Iran or other countries. The issue at stake is something very different. Absolutely. Now, Jal Sab, uh, 
couple of points here now. So first of all, uh, as an observer state, uh, China has also been invited uh, to be a part of this moot. Uh, the Chinese foreign minister ha uh, has landed in Pakistan. He is going to be a part of that. So the role of the Chinese, China is a non-Muslim country but is an observer state. Uh, how do you see that particular presence? How do you see things moving now? Because so there was a time when OIC was rated and considered as uh, an organization, despite being the second largest after United Nations, representing 1.9 billion people, having almost all the resources in the world, yet they were unable to deliver to their people. Uh, they were having different opinions, they were not on the same page, Iran was having issues with Saudi Arabia and you know we always talk about this uh, Middle Eastern crisis and so and so forth and then what we witnessed in 2011 was unbelievable that uh, entire uh, you know uh, uh, North uh, African uh, uh, you know leadership was uh, wasn't there perhaps was eliminated talk about Egypt Morsi was gone though he was uh, somebody uh, who was elected. You talk about Beirut, you talk about Palestine, you talk about Libya, Muammar Gaddafi was killed and then so many regimes, Algeria all the way. Now so the American uh, kind of an indirect pressure on the Muslim countries to be able to sort of support the American ideology rather than whatever suits them. Do, do you think sir the, the current uh, growing influence of the Chinese and the Russians what you know would have actually made a lot of people think for example the Saudi leadership or the UAE UAE was put in the gray list because they abstained uh, from the you know decision making uh, in the UN your take on that part sir Jalsa? the presence of China is, uh, is uh, critical for many points number one Chinese economy growing at the pace that it is and the markets that it has in the Middle East and the dependence for the Middle East on the Chinese is growing over a period of time, number one. So therefore, China is the one uh, country which can create the linkages that are required. Number two, when Belt and Road Initiative starts maturing, the biggest beneficiaries other than Pakistan, China and Sunni Republics is going to the Middle East because they'll have access to markets from there to East to I mean the, 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 the potential is humongous. So that is where again the Middle East uh, comes in. And finally with the evolving uh, power structure in the world as things are right now uh, the, the old order has been challenged very directly and uh, they feel threatened. Uh, the main player, China Although it doesn't come out uh, militarily, but it is a main player and uh, backed up by Russia. So the two of them uh, countries have very, very close relationship. We may not realize in Pakistan, but the relationship is far closer and far deeper than uh, uh, I think the world is just coming to realize the, the extent and the depth of the relationship between these two countries. So the East as a whole is now uh, on the rise. And this is where I think uh, Middle East uh, would find it very uh, advantageous to have Chinese say. But this is going to ruffle a lot of feathers in the West. Uh, led by, I mean, the Americans won't like it, the Britishers won't like it, and the and the French and the Indians have already, I mean, they voted against the Islamophobia, uh, this so it is presented. They would like this to happen. Because imagine if Middle East, uh, like the UAE and Saudi Arabia, already have refused to receive calls from the, 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 the big man himself. Uh, the, the, the direction that things are taking must be very disturbing for the old uh, power structure. This is where I think Chinese uh, will come into play and China's role here will be very, very critical. And I think it's good that we have Chinese here on board as observers. And aggressively, I think the Population of China, Muslims in China is also pretty, uh, pretty, pretty large. And uh, if India could be invited as the observer, despite being a predominantly Hindu country, why not China? All right. Now, a quick comment uh, uh, from you, uh, Dr. Talat Shabir, and uh, then uh, uh, to our friend uh, Ghari Saab. Now, sir, Imran Khan Saab has said that, uh, you know, this particular 
Moot is about partnering in unity, justice and development. So uh, let's, let's talk about that, sir. Don't you think that is also something very important and perhaps these elements are little missing in the Muslim world, in the Muslim Ummah? Uh, I think uh, uh, when we, we say the major theme of uh, this mood uh, being unity, justice uh, and development. So if you push push through this theme, I think they'll, you'll have very hostile uh, reaction to, to what you are thinking. Because so far, I think uh, the OIC has not been able to make a mark uh, on um, on Islamic world. Is the reason is that uh, there are there are many uh, different opinions about various various things. There are individual countries' interests, you know, uh, which are uh, more important than uh, overall Ummah's Ummah's interests. You can also find uh, voices like when we we uh, when we talk of Kashmir issue post uh, August 5, uh, 2019, we saw many Muslim countries actually not uh, you know coming forward. To condemn India, and as a matter of fact, they were, you know, shaking hand with India. So uh, there are problems with regards to unity. We do not have a unity of purpose. For example, I always stress that when you talk of OIC, you talk of uh, Palestine issue only. No, when you talk of OIC, you talk of issues of Islamic world. For example, uh, in many forums, when I observe, I have observed. That people would also the countries would also specifically talk about Palestinian issue, and they will just not mention make a mention of Kashmir issue. So, the unity and justice is very important element of this uh, this organization, this integration arrangement. So, I think uh, there is a there is a critical uh, you know appraisal is required to be carried out uh, with regards to what how can we forge unity, how can we uh, seek justice for for, for Muslim how can we fight for it. You know, if it is just, a, uh, you know, passing various resolutions and uh, speaking from the from the standpoint of our own uh, individual interests and not talking of uh, Ummah's, you know, uh, global image. So I think it will not work better. It will work better. It will serve the purpose only if we uh, partner for unity, which is very important, and uh, justice and development. You know, this, 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 this is very important theme set for uh, this particular uh, mode that is being held in Islamabad, and I think uh, this is high time for Muslim Ma to wake up to uh, to the call because uh, uh, you have to, you know, do it. If you don't do it, if you don't do do these do these three things, so I think you you'll face problems. And I think all the countries of Islamic world must come on board uh, to push with this agenda. Harisab, your comment on the same point. Yeah, Faisal, um, yeah, I agree with Dr. Saab uh, that when it comes to political issues, um, I don't think there would be any miracle, you know, coming, uh, you know, uh, from this mood or maybe, you know, the next in next few years. But when it comes to, you know, development, the common de development, prosperity and uh, Islamophobia and the issues that are where you can, you have commonalities, I think those are the issues where we should focus more. And as you mentioned that uh, when Prime Minister has said that this would be the focus, uh, you know, Pakistan would be focusing on that and highlighting those things. So I think this would be the right approach because when it comes to the political issues like we've mentioned, like Kashmir, we, we can't expect much from them as because this is the, what the history is. Similarly, the differences between the Muslim countries on many other issues. So they would stay there. But on common grounds, this Chinese uh, inclusion as uh, as an observer, I think this is a good omen and a good step because uh, we know that you know when Chinese, this is a, they have set an example that with many countries where they had many differences. Take the example of China and uh, uh, India. Take the example of China and uh, I mean Japan. They have many differences, but when it comes to trade, when it comes to econ economy, uh, they are open to that. And I think this should be the approach uh, Pakistan as a country and OIC uh, members, uh, Muslim countries, uh, mem all the members of OIC, they should adopt that approach initially. Then, uh, step-wise, we might be able to, you know, address the issues where we have uh, 
always had the differences or at least where the, the expectations that we had with OIC that could not be fulfilled. But uh, at least there would be some, you know, uh, some development to the, to, 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 to the right direction. All right, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Ghari Sahib, uh, General uh, Ghulam, Mustafa Sahib. It was great to have you on the show. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Talaj Shabir Sahib, for your time as well. And uh, that's all we have uh, for this hour. I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow. And even the day after, we'll be having these uh, live uh, transmissions and totally focusing on this uh, 48th session of the OIC. And we'll be keeping you updated on each and every story. Anyway, uh, I'll be now. I'll see you tomorrow at 8.05 p.m. Till then, you take good care of yourself. Khuda Hafiz.